Mike, if you can give me your full name, where and when you were born, and what you did as a youngster. Uh, my name is Michael Edward Lamb. I was born in Yuma, Arizona, uh, March 15th, 1964. And my days as a youngster, I spent most of the time in, in Wyoming growing up on a farm, uh, small craters and running around the neighborhood. How did you end up in Wyoming? Uh, my father and uh, mother moved from Yuma, Arizona up to Wyoming where most of my family is from. They just moved back to be close to family. And work was there or were you on a farm or? Well, my dad was a meat cutter. He yeah. actually worked for uh, Safeway <clears throat> stores as a meat cutter and he transferred from Yuma, Arizona up to Riverton, Wyoming and uh, to be closer to family and sure. Powell and Cody and stuff like that. Yeah. Great. Any brothers or sisters? I'd have a, one younger brother, okay. Stephen. So uh, what did you and your younger brother do? What kind of games, different things did you do? Oh boy, you know, we, uh, we were outdoorsy kids. We loved bicycling and, and climbing. We lived in uh, some foothills of the Rocky Mountains, so we, we were in the hills quite a bit. And um, we just loved tinkering with uh, mechanical things and riding our bicycles, riding horses, uh, playing with the, the critters on the farm. Do some hunting? Did a little hunting, yes. Uh, we hunted, uh, it was pretty much part of the family routine every year to go deer, elk, and uh, moose hunting. How about fishing? Did a little fishing, yep. Uh, we always fished. We lived uh, probably about uh, 10 minutes away from uh, a good sized reservoir called Boyson Reservoir, and we'd take a boat out on that reservoir and fish quite a bit as a kid. What'd you catch? Trout, mostly. Okay. Some perch. A lot of fun, I bet. Oh yeah, yeah, we had a good time. It was a good, good place to grow up. Good. Mike, at what age did you start thinking about getting into the service? Uh, you know, I uh, <clears throat> not till uh, after I graduated high school. I uh, really hadn't thought about going into the service at all. I was just, uh, I worked in a parts store, um, dealing with uh, uh, vehicle parts, repair parts and stuff, because I'm kind of a motorhead mm -hmm. uh, by, <laughs> by heart. and. Uh, um, if, you, if you like, I can tell you the story how I got introduced to the Marine Corps. Sure. Um, <clears throat> a classmate of mine had graduated high school and I hadn't seen him um, that summer. <clears throat> and he showed up at my workplace uh, dressed in his Alpha uniform, his Marine uniform, and uh, I was kind of set back a little bit and wondered what he was, what he was all about and what he was doing. And he told me about his, uh, his new job as a Marine. and. Uh, talked to me for a little bit and convinced me to talk to his recruiter and uh, that was where it started. So what was basic training like for you? Basic training was, uh, it was a trying time. Um, just like uh, for most people, it's, it's where you really learn about yourself and you peel the, peel the onion back and really figure out what's going on in your life and, and how to get through things. What were your instructors like? Uh, basic training, they were drill instructors. They were everything that anybody's ever thought of uh, a drill instructor being. Um, very strict. I mean, you had, your, you had your, your heavies that were the real tough guys, and then you had to, on your lighter side the guys that were like, okay, well, tell me really what your problem is, and I can help you out and get through this. But uh, yeah, it was very, uh, very informative. And you had to learn or get out. It was a good time. Now you said your friend pretty much impressed upon you to yes. get into the service, or as Marines always say, into the Marine Corps. Right. Uh, did you think about any anything else, like Air Force, Navy, or anything like that, or was it pretty much all the time it was going to be the Marines? You know, uh, it's funny that uh, when I was in high school, I had some buddies that were talking about possibly going into Army, and I, I really had no intentions of doing anything at all. And, uh, it's kind of funny that uh, I look back and even then I was I was telling myself, well, uh, if I do go in the service, I'll definitely not go in the Marine Corps because that's the hardest one to go into, so I'm definitely not doing that. And, um, you never say never. <laughs> I learned that very early. So, um, But no, I really didn't think about going in the military until I saw my friend back. So what years uh, were you in and what was your highest rank? Uh, I went in uh, in December of 1982 and retired in uh, September of uh, 2006, <clears throat> almost 24 years. 
I achieved the rank on the enlisted side as, of a staff sergeant and uh, continued on with the remaining part of my career as a Chief Warrant Officer 4 is when I retired. When you say a Chief Warrant Officer, can you tell us about what you did in that position? I, I was a, uh, my specialty was in armor, uh, tanks and artillery and uh, the big guns, um, Amtraks, the ordnance vehicles, things that shoot, move and communicate. And uh, as a enlisted guy, that was my specialty. And the chief warrant or the warrant officer ranks, they take those that are in those particular occupations and pull out the ones that they think should be part of the bigger picture and give them more responsibility, become an officer, go to officer candidate school, um, maintenance officer school, and uh, they continue on the the administrative and the maintenance and the leadership side and um, run bigger organizations. How hard was it to move up in the ranks? Uh, you know, uh, at one point I was almost getting ready to get out of the Marine Corps as a sergeant at my 10 year mark. Um, I had been a sergeant for seven years and that's a long time for somebody to be at one rank, but up until that point I picked up rank fairly quickly and then uh, uh, about that time that I was thinking about transitioning out into the, uh, the civilian world, I became a staff sergeant and that continued on my career. What was, like, uh, what was life like day to day in the service? Uh, boy, um, sometimes it was the same little thing every day, um, but uh, it, it changed up quite a bit. I mean, there was a lot, uh, a lot you have to do to stay qualified and stay up to date with your, your uh, your responsibilities in the Marine Corps. So in, on one hand, it was very comfortable because you knew what you had to do every day. On the other side, it was, okay, I gotta be on my toes because you know I'm, I might have to go somewhere or I am going somewhere that uh, might be hostile or, you know, the training was always fun, pretty tough. We talked earlier, you had mentioned that uh, you've been to several different locations. Can you tell us about some of the locations you were at and what you did? Sure. Um, as a uh, ordnance guy, as a tank mechanic, actually in my early days, I uh, went to Okinawa, Japan, um, participated in maneuvers in Korea, some of the stuff that you see in the news mm -hmm. that uh, the Trump, uh, <laughs> Trump uh, guys are holding back on doing over there in Korea right now. Um, uh, two tours in Okinawa, a couple times in uh, Korea, um, traveled to uh, Iraq and uh, was over there for the first votes, um, participated in the, the logistics of getting everything together over there in, uh, in Iraq for that. Um, back and forth in the United States from the East Coast to West Coast numerous times. Uh, a lot of deployments within the States, um, moving around about every three or four years. While you were in Iraq, did you lose anybody that was uh, in your uh, battalion or whatever it would happen to, ha happen to be? <laughs> While I was in Iraq, no, I didn't. Um, uh, I was fortunate. I was uh, in a, uh, a type of uh, a pretty, uh, pretty well guarded spot. And uh, those people that I worked with um, were new acquaintances with me. I went over as a, a logistics uh, liaison for our organization and worked very, mostly by myself. Um, but uh, in the previous Iraq wars and, and stuff, I, we've lost some friends. Mm -hmm. did. When uh, you had to step foot on Iraq and obviously you knew all the different things that were going on there, what were the types of feelings that you had? Uh, I think probably um, you got to be careful what you ask for. Um, uh, felt a little remorse, a little, little uh, apprehensive of leaving my family, uh, leaving them to have to worry about what I'm doing. Um, I really didn't feel uh, any concern of, of danger. I mean, the danger was all around, but I mean, the training and, and uh, the lifestyle that we had lived up until that point really kind of prepared me for it. But, uh, do you have a lot of good memories? I do, I do. Marine Corps really molded me. Uh, it really helped me out in life. Uh, I was a beer and potato chips kid <laughs> before I went in the Marine Corps and uh, 
you know, going that route was not always the best thing for most people. So I, I was glad to have been diverted. You have a, a tattoo sleeve on your left arm. I do. Is that something you got while you were in the service? Some of it is in the service and some of it was after. Okay. Uh, any particular reason that you decided to get it? Uh, you know, I call this my branch of the armed services. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of being a Marine. Um, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I wouldn't have been uh, in the Marine Corps. Uh, it instilled in me a, a lot of uh, a lot of the disciplines that people need to, to get ahead in life. And um, it's just been a part of the core of who I've been ever since. Your final day. You know that you're all done, you're coming home. Tell us about that. Uh, well, there's many of those final days. I mean, the final days from deployments and training and things like that, those are always momentous occasions. Those are great because you're, you know you're going back home to be with your loved ones and you're going back into the, the routine that you knew. Um, then uh, as far as retirement was concerned, it was kind of a, uh, all of a sudden it was there and um, you know, people came to say goodbye and congratulations and good luck in the future and what are you going to do now and tell them a little bit of what you, you think you're wanting to do and where you're going to go and try it out and we did that. It was, uh, it was an exciting time. I was ready to retire. Was it sad? Uh, yes, yes. There's, there's, uh, there's a little bit of sadness that goes with it, but you know, it's a part of life, I think. Um, I kept the Marine Corps alive in my days after retirement too, so it wasn't like it was completely gone. Mm -hmm. Do you belong to any service organizations? Uh, Marine Corps League out of Riverton, Wyoming. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, you're out of the service. Uh, right now you uh, work for Stallion. I do. Uh, tell us about how that came about and what were you able to take from the service, from the Marines, into the job that you have right now? Well, uh, I first, uh, when we moved back to our hometown in Riverton, Wyoming, um, I was getting ready to go to work for a, a trucking company, working maintenance. Um, and I stopped by Stallion Old Food Services, <clears throat> offered them my resume, and uh, was hired on spot, uh, which was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> um, but I became, I, I started as a mechanic, um, working on field gear and and working in the shop on heavy equipment and things like that. And uh, it was, wasn't very long before the organizational skills that I had grown with in the Marine Corps kind of propelled me into doing things in the shop and the field environment to help things along a little better, organizing things, um, inventories, and try to save money here and you know use the, the assets that you have and things like that and that kind of helped me along in the, in the organization and they recognized that and kind of pushed me along. I was going to say you're in a leadership position with Stallion correct? I am I'm the operations manager here in Williston. Okay um, a lot of responsibility with that? Yes yeah <laughs> quite a bit uh, it's uh, it's an interesting uh, interesting occupation being part of the um, the oil industry up here, you know, and it was the same way in Riverton, Wyoming. Um, same type of equipment, just in a different location. Uh, so it's it's kind of exciting. It's kind of a sales kind of thing, and kind of a new equipment kind of thing, and uh, a whole lot of uh, mentoring people, um, mentoring the employees, and helping them along. So they understand it's not just a job; it's what you put into it that makes it you know, a, a lifestyle or, or makes you successful. Great. Mike, I want to thank you for your service and I want to thank you for doing this interview. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here.